fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Okay. Joe is there. What's up everyone, welcome to Cracker. This is Loki's Den and I am your host, Loki Goblin 13 As you can tell, I'm going to do my top 20 G.I. Joes. Uh, Therapy Wheels had mentioned he wanted to see a top 10 of my favorite Joes, but I went above and beyond and I'm going for my top 20 because it was hard to narrow them down. <laughs> um, but I did mix some Cobra figures in there as well because not all my favorites are G.I. Joes. So uh, let's take a look and let's start with number 20. Alrighty, number 20 on my list is Firefly from Cobra. This is his newer look from the 90s. Well, I guess it's not his newer look, but the one I have. Um, this is the only figure I have of Firefly. Um, I never had the original, which I thought the original was much cooler than this one. But I always thought Firefly was awesome because he's like their uh, sabotage kind of uh, saboteur expert. You know, he'd go undercover kind of thing and get in there and mess with G.I. Joe's fuel supply or, or something or their food. But um just always thought he was cool. And it is it's not a bad figure, it's nice colors and stuff like that. But the original one, maybe I'll get that down the line, is much cooler than this one. So let's move on, shall we? Alrighty, number nineteen just happens to be another Cobra figure, and that is the Cobra Bat or Battle Android Trooper. Um, I like the original one better than all the other ones. I just think it's a cooler design. And they were just cool figures. And, you know, we had robot warriors. Very, very cool. A lot of fun. Um, one day I will get the, uh, probably a, a better version of this because it's the one I had when I was a kid. And you see it's got a lot of wear. But uh, maybe I'll get a complete cooler version. Might even go after the 25th anniversary one because that one's just cooler looking because uh, the accessories and stuff like that. But number 19, the bat. Number 18, uh, <laughs> I guess there's a trend going. Number 18, uh, for me, was another Cobra figure, Copperhead. This is the Python Patrol Copperhead, which actually all the Copperheads are pretty cool looking. Um, I do like the original design one, but I don't have that one. Never had him as a kid. This was the character I had. Um, and like I said, it was just, he's just a cool looking figure. I like the colors on him, especially with the Python Patrol. Even the regular one, the color was cool. And, uh, of course, he was the vehicle driver. But, um... He was just fun, especially in the cartoon. I liked watching him getting his butt kicked. So, uh, number 18, Copperhead. Alrighty, finally a Joe out of the mix. Uh, <laughs> this is number uh, 17, and that is Sergeant Slaughter. This is from his Sergeant Slaughter Marauder uh, outfit, which is the one I had as a kid. Never had the original, because I knew the original. I don't know if it came with his little tank, uh, or just separate, but... This is the one I always had. And I always just thought he was cool because he was like one of the, the toughest, if you know, well, one of the toughest, if not the toughest, uh, Joe they had. And, of course, he was a wrestler, and I love watching Sonja Slaughter when he was in the WWF. Ah, see? Um, I just thought he was cool. Just a cool character. Just, you know, no nonsense. Do what I'm telling you to do or I'm going to kick your ass kind of character. So that's number 17, Sergeant Slaughter. Woo! And we're back to Cobras. Um, number 16 is the Frag Viper. I always thought he just looked awesome. So I think this is the only version of the, uh, the Frag Viper I have, or there ever was. I don't know if there was an earlier version than this. But the guy came with a whole backpack full of grenades and a thrower. Very, very cool. Um, he is definitely one of my favorite Cobra figures of all time. Uh, otherwise, he wouldn't be in this video. There you go. Alrighty, on to number 15. Number 15 is a Joe, and that is Repeater. I just always thought his, his look was cool. It was like almost like a, just a regular Marine kind of character. And he came with a giant machine gun, which was cool, that connected to his side over there. And he was just a fun character. Don't know why. Just just think he was just cool looking. The design, you know, just he kind of blended into anything. And the giant machine gun was always a plus. There you go. Alrighty, number 14 is another Joe. Uh, which is one of my another one of my personal favorites, and that is Dusty. This is his uh, 90s version or late 80s version of his desert uh, uniform. This is the one I grew up with, with a kid. Um, with a kid, wow! It's the one I grew up with as a kid. Um, I never had the original Dusty, which wasn't too bad, but I actually like this one better. I just thought he looked cooler. Um, might just for me because his original outfit was all green, and uh, he had like you know that little sand flap back there. You know, keep sand out of there, but I don't know, I never really, 
uh, understood the point if he's supposed to be a desert character and he's wearing all green. So this made a little more sense. There we go. Moving on. Time now for the unlucky number 13. But 13 is actually my lucky number, my favorite number nonetheless. Uh, number 13 goes to a Cobra character known as Crocmaster. He is by far one of the coolest looking figures I've ever seen. Especially for G.I. Joe. Just the detail on him is just amazing. And the fact that he came with a giant crocodile <laughs> is really cool. Um, he was, of course, one of my favorite villains. Uh, he's supposed to be just like a... They, they list him as like a trainer, I guess, or, or pet trainer or whatever it is, but he's just cool in general. I used to have him as anything. So there you go, Crocmaster. Alrighty, number 12 for me. Uh, basically, the character is kind of plain, but I just thought he was kind of cool to begin with. Uh, that's why I got him originally. And um, <clears throat> one of the main reasons I got him is when I saw the movie, I just thought the character was awesome. Uh, so number 12 is a Joe figure, Chuckles. With a Hawaiian shirt, he's supposed to be an undercover uh, G.I. Joe. But if you watch the movie, the guy is just flat out crazy. And um, just an awesome figure to have. So number 12, Chuckles. Alrighty, number 11 on my list uh, is a character that most people don't know how to pronounce his name because his name is kind of up in the air on how to pronounce it. Um, I just thought he was one of the core uh, G.I. Joe figures I had, which was the late 80s. I think it was 1990 he came out. Now it's Chebang. I think he's supposed to be uh, Storm Shadow's cousin. But uh, just a very cool figure. I liked him a lot. A lot of fun to play with as a kid. There you go, number 11, Chebang. Alrighty, you've made it to my top ten now. I uh, want to apologize, though. Uh, there's a reason there's just no weapons with everybody, because that would be, uh, be probably be crazy and take up a lot longer in this video. But um, the real reason is I don't really don't have all the weapons for every character, so I figured just go weapons list. But um, number ten on my list is a Cobra figure known as Slice. Just another cool Cobra ninja. Loved his design when I was a kid. Just a lot of fun. So number 10, Slice. Alrighty, number 9 on my list is a Joe figure known as Pathfinder. Just thought he was another awesome character. He came with these two giant, like, uh, machine laser gun kind of things, and he came with a uh, giant weed whacker, which is what it looks like. Um, but just an awesome character because those machine guns really set him apart, which I do not have his machine guns. I do have his weed whacker, though. So uh, number 9 is... Pathfinder. Alrighty, made it to number 8. Uh, this is a character I do not have complete, like many of my characters, but I just loved him as a, when I was a kid because his colors were amazing and the weapons he came with were just just awesome. Um, number 8 is a Cobra figure known as the Alley Viper, which this is the first Alley Viper I had gotten when I was a kid. Um, I don't know if this is the original Alley Viper, but um, this guy was awesome. Came with a shield, the giant, well, not a giant machine gun, but a machine gun with a grenade launcher kind of thing, and a face mask. He was uh, no nonsense, and the colors were just cool. I just thought he was cool because he was a bright colored character. I'm like, hey, look at that. It's awesome. So, number eight, Alley Viper. As they claim, lucky number seven. Um, never been lucky for me, really, but what the hell. Number seven is another Cobra figure uh, known as the Night Viper. Just thought he was another character that was cool. Came with a little thing that went down there for his, uh, like a telescope thing he had. But just cool colors. He came with a, uh, a gun that went on the side here, which I do have, which was like a grenade launcher slash machine gun or a laser rifle. But um, definitely a very, very cool character. Loved him as a kid. Alrighty, we're up to number six. Number six in my uh, countdown is a Joe character known as Budo, which you recently seen. I got a new one of him. Just a cool samurai character. I love the fact that he came with all these weapons and could attach stuff to gear, and he had a backpack that held two swords. But um, just a cool character. He was another one of my favorites when I was a kid. Love playing with this guy. Budo. Alrighty, down to the last five, the final five. Um... Number five on my list is a character, another one, like I said, I'm going to say this a lot, because obviously they're my favorites, so they're going to be on the list. Um, this character had an interesting history, uh, which I actually do know it, because I, I remember uh, hearing about it, and then I looked it up, and supposedly it's true. But um, number five on my list is Big Boa. Now, this guy is supposed to be a Cobra trainer, or hand-to-hand -hand trainer, 
and he came with a pair of boxing gloves and a punching bag. Now, the reason for this, this is where it gets fun. Finally, I got some history. Originally, uh, Rocky Balboa, the, the character Sylvester Stallone came up with, you know, the boxer, they are originally going to make Rocky Balboa a G.I. Joe character, like they did um, a football guy called The Refrigerator that they wound up calling The Fridge. He was a mail-away character. Uh, apparently, they were going to do a Rocky Balboa figure, make him a G.I. Joe, and he was supposed to have boxing gloves and a punching bag and all that stuff. And apparently, there was never a deal, uh, not not made, but the deal never went through. I guess they turned it down. So, in a way, this is the um, this was supposed to be the original mold for Rocky Balboa, and they turned him into uh, a Viper and put a mask on him, well, Cobra Viper or whatever you want to call him, Cobra character, put a mask on him, but gave him the same stuff. And then added, you know, this uh, like, you know, kind of suit to it, like the the crisscross with the spikes. Kind of, I don't know if it was as a joke or just kind of saying we're going to do it anyway, even though we can't do the Rocky character. But they went ahead and made Big Boa, who was basically the exact same thing, and that's why they called him Big Boa, which I guess fits Cobra, Boa, Constructor kind of thing. But um, I always thought he was just a cool character. You know, I had no idea he was really a trainer when I was a kid. I just got him because he looked cool, and he just look like an awesome figure. I'm like, he looked like something out of Mad Max, but very cool. Number five, Big Boa. Ah, uh, now we're at the final four. Uh, <laughs> number four on my list is a Joe character. Again, it's another character I saw in the G.I. Joe movie. I just thought he was amazing, his, that he was just, he was just cool. He was a different character. He was just like, you wanted to root for him, and um, he seemed like he was from New York. Who knows? He must have been, if you, you know, the character he is. Tunnel Rat. It's very, very cool. The guy runs through sewers for a living. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he came with a giant, like, uh, rifle kind of thing, which I think I still have. But um, he's just a cool character, especially in the movie. He was a lot of fun to watch. So, uh, number four, Tunnel Rat. Ah, so close to the end. Uh, number three on my list is a character that is um, one who switched sides many times. And... Um, just a cool character, nonetheless, on, on either side. I liked him as a villain, and I liked him as a good guy. Number three is Storm Shadow, which this is his um, later 80s, middle 80s uh, uniform. I never had the original villain, Storm Shadow, where it was just, you know, white ninja-looking thing, you know, without the hood, basically, and the zigzag kind of patterns. Well, not zigzag, but it's kind of like Tetris on his uh, thing there. But uh, eventually I will get him down the line, but this just is an awesome character. And that is Storm Shadow, number three. Almost there, everyone. All right, number two on my list is a Joe character. Uh, probably everyone thought he was going to be number one on my list, but he's actually number two. It was a close tie, but number two is Snake Eyes. This is the, I believe, the second or third version. I think it's the second version of him. Because uh, there was the one, the original Snake Eyes, which I never had, which had like a a vent kind of um, faceplate kind of thing over there, which you've seen in the G.I. Joe movie if you've seen it, or the cartoon. Um, but this is the one I grew up on. This with the two swords on his chest. Uh, he came with uh, Timber, which was a, uh, a Timber Wolf, and a backpack with a sword, a pair of nunchucks, uh, I think a bow and arrow or something like that, which I don't have any of that stuff. But number two is Snake Eyes, because he's just an awesome figure nonetheless, and if you're a G.I. Joe fan and collector, you have to have a Snake Eyes, at least in your, in your collection, at least once. Um, another version of Snake Eyes that I had when I was a kid, which I don't have anymore, that I actually want to get, that I thought was pretty cool, he looked like a ninja skier, which was, I think, the fourth, third or fourth version in the 90s, where he had, like, the red face mask and, the like, the goggles. Very cool. So, number two, Snake Eyes. All right, you've made it to number one. What could possibly my, be my number one favorite after Snake Eyes is Deems number two. It was a tough, tough call, but this is another character that they never had after the movie, which not that I know of, um, but he was just an awesome character in the movie, and he was an awesome character in general. Um, <clears throat> mostly, the reason I chose him as my favorite is because uh, imagination-wise, you know, when you had him as a kid, your imagination kind of ran wild because this is the ultimate Basically, the ultimate Cobra fighter. There you go. Who is it? Nemesis Enforcer is number one. The guy came with two blades that, that you know, as you can see, attached to his elbows, which in the movie they kind of expanded, which was cool. He came with bat wings as like a backpack kind of thing, because in the uh, cartoon he had bat wings. He was able to fly. 
Uh, and for some reason, he came with a backpack kind of thing that was tentacles. I don't know what the hell the pr purpose of that was, because uh, I don't remember that ever being in anything. Unless it was in the show. What? I don't know. But um, what I said was, you know, imagination-wise, you got to think about when you watch the movie, this guy's almost indestructible. I mean, he's kicking everyone's ass. He's flying around. You know, his wings go over his, in front of him to block him from laser attacks. You know, he wasn't able to get, you know... He lifted up, put his wings in between, like, laser bars and freaking was able to deflect it. Nuts. And the only way he lost is Sergeant Slaughter got him in a sleeper hold. But, um, which I, I still cry bullshit. Um, but this is my favorite one. I just thought he was amazing. And that is Nemesis Enforcer. So, that is it. Those are my top 20. Like I said, I went above and beyond. Probably because I didn't have all the weapons and everything, so it made it move a little faster. Um, hope you enjoyed it. You can agree or disagree if you like. Maybe you want to tell me your top figures or your top characters you like the most in G.I. Joe. Go nuts. If you like what you see, hit the little like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. Uh, comment away. I love the comments. And uh, if you want, you can subscribe or tell your friends, family about it, whatever. If they want to subscribe, more the merrier. That'll be it. I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, of course, it's not the size of your main cave that matters. Actually, I should say, it's not the size of your cave. I was Put the man cave in there. Ugh. It's a cave in general. It's not the size of your cave that matters. It's what you have in it. Later, everyone.